Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Happy, geez, what day is it? Oh, yeah, Friday. Sometimes I lose track of the days because, well, every day is Friday in our world most weeks. My friends, we have yet another amazing guest this morning. I'm so excited. All the way, I believe, from the United Kingdom. Lucy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hello. Where are you calling in from in the United Kingdom? What part? What You don't have to tell it's the exact city. Smith. Portsmouth. Um, yeah, Portsmouth, right down on the south coast. Wow, wow. What a cool thing. What a cool thing. So um, welcome to Legendary. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. I'm so thrilled to have you on the show. You earned it. You deserve it. Tell us what led you to Legendary in the first place. What were you looking for and, and do you think you found it? Definitely found it, yes. Um, I was just looking for uh, more freedom as a mum. I had a really busy job. I had my own soft furnishings business um, and it was manageable when I had just one child and then when my second come along it just the balance of our family life just went. It just sort of overrun really. So I was just looking at ways that I can find um, yeah ways to find that I could make money online so I didn't have to work as much. Kind of, kind of how we all got started, right? Kind of the reason yeah. why we're all here, right? Yeah. So what, what, um, how did you first hear about us? Who did you run into? What about their message attracted you? Scrolling through TikTok and um, it was M Walcott. Um, she was a busy mum herself and yeah, she was doing really well with it. So yeah, I, I joined in through her. Nice. And what, what about her? What about her message was attractive to you? I mean, what did she say? What did she do? I mean, what were some of the things if we look back to what worked for her to, to attract you to, you know, that resonated with you? What was it? She just wanted to be spending more time with her children. And that's exactly what I wanted to be doing. Um, yeah. And she was just able to achieve that. So that's what that's what attracted me to her. Yeah. Yeah. So you started with, um, how long did it take you before you actually enrolled in the challenge? Did you procrastinate at all? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Quite a few weeks of watching her. Um, yeah, and then I just went, yeah, went all in. So I as you were- it, I didn't do it straight away, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and most people don't. So as you were kind of going through the training and you, were, you started the challenge, what did you think? I mean, what was your experience like? Like what light bulb moments went off for you? How did you realize this was it for you? Just the way that you could earn differently. Like you didn't have to just slave away all day. It's just a different way of earning. So um, yeah, it took me about three weeks to do the challenge and to let it all sink in. Um, but yeah, just that really. Yeah. Um, what was your, what is your, what is your previous career in, in, uh, do I understand that you, you quit that or what is your current status with that? Can you talk, can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah. So I've been doing that job for 20 years. It's like soft furnishings. So I make curtains, Roman blinds. Um, my mum taught me when I was 18 years old. So that's all I ever knew. Um, but it just got really stressful last year and so my husband just suggested i just take a break with it he would support us um mm. and just so we could just regain a little bit of balance back in our family and that's what it done but then just only having one income it's just yeah i needed to start looking at other ways where i could work and still bring in an income but where it wasn't stressing us all out and that's what it had been doing um, but yeah it was just running my own business i used to do it from my back garden i'd have my work room built um yeah, so I've just, that's all I've known. Done that for 20 years and my mum taught me. So basically you were just sitting in your home studio there, never on video, never doing any marketing of any sort. Do I, right? This is completely new to me. That's why I'm so nervous right now. My heart is literally beating a hundred miles an hour. So yeah, I'm sorry if I come across really mumbly, but yeah, this is complete a completely different career path for me. I was used to sitting at a sewing machine for hours and hours on end. And now I'm like, sit, 
sitting at a laptop. So yeah, um, completely different, which is good because I did want to challenge myself after being in the same job for like 20 years. So um, yeah, completely out of my comfort zone right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful though. Thank you for sharing that. You look wonderful. You're not mumbly at all. You're 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 authentic. You're real. Your smile is gorgeous. It, it's just your energy is pure. It's wonderful. What is your husband's name? Um, Tom. Tom. And he's a plasterer. Yeah. He's a plaster. Plasterer. Self-employed plasterer, Tom. Yeah. He's Shout out to Tom. Shout yes. out to Tom for wanting you to stop and take a break. And I just love that. And so when you started doing this, um, what, what, what did you say to Tom? How did you approach him about this? At first he was, he was mind blown. Yeah. Um, he's always been really, really, really supportive. Um, and we just knew the way that things were working just wasn't working for us anymore. And I also used to rope him up him on doing all like the fittings of my curtains so he used to have a whole day at work <laughs> plastering which is um yeah quite draining job and he used to come in my mum used to come around look after the children and we'd go on out with my curtains and he'd be drilling up my palmets and it just got too much so i think he's pretty behind this now <laughs> And and then and then after after he drilled up the walls and put holes in them, he could fix them with the plaster, right? Yeah, that's it. If he, if he made a mistake, <laughs> he could just come and refill it. It's just perfect. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, that Lucy, that is so like that's so sweet though too. Like just this him wanting you to have less stress and him inviting you to stay home for a while. And then you hacks the whole family. Like when you're stressed, you radiate it through the household. And then if he's coming in, then he's getting stressed and then everyone feels it. I think everyone feels so. Yeah. It was just nice to not feel like that anymore. So yeah. Yeah. He's so amazing. Talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, being so, this being so new in having learned your curtain business and that trade from your mom. And as you guys call them over there, your mom, right? Yeah, how mom, did mommy. You, mommy, <laughs> how, 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 how have you, how have you dealt with, with, you know, sharing this with other people, not particularly trying to sell them anything, but just this being so new, this being so, may be uncomfortable for you. A lot of times, especially when we get into filming videos and stuff, we can be more like embarrassed or like self-conscious like around our family and we can be more self-conscious and kind of have anxiety around our friends and family finding out that we're doing something different and new and be sort of afraid of their judgment and criticism. So what, can you say more about your experience with sort of navigating you know, doing something so new around your family, filming videos there in the house. How have you gotten comfortable with with doing that with not only no experience, but also in the UK, you guys are a lot more conservative than America. And so these kind of things are not as welcome. They're not as celebrated. How have you navigated that? I just didn't like where we were. I knew that I wanted, I had a goal to where I want to be and that pushed me forward. So I just started, I just started messy and I have learned so much along the way, like so much. So it is just about starting um, and that's what I've done. I just, it is cringy. I like, you look back at some of the videos and I deleted so many videos, delete, delete, delete. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just pushing yourself to start, I'd say. And then not worrying about what anyone else is doing or thinking and just staying in your own lane. Know your reason why you're doing it and then just go for that. And I think that's what's kept me kept me going and not worrying about what anyone else is thinking. Okay, so take us into those first days of filming those videos and starting to create that content. What what was that what was that like for you? I mean, what was the initial mindset hurdles that you had to overcome? And then when you were deleting videos and stuff like that, which, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of people deleting videos because it's just like we all, all of our videos suck at the beginning. 
But how did you how did you even build up the courage to just get started marketing? And then how did you overcome that second part of when you were seemed to be criticizing yourself so much and picking everything you did apart? Got to just end up getting over it and thinking the things that you're looking at, people's not even seeing that. Um, so just yeah, just getting over that in your, it's mindset. It's all to do with your mindset. Um, mm. Getting over that. And then it was, what content do I want to create? So you start thinking about what you can create. And then you'll know, as soon as you start doing the videos and content, you'll start learning and pivoting on what way that you want to go. Um, so I started with like the side hustle videos. I've done all them. And then my TikTok kept getting um, flagged. And I thought, yeah, I don't feel comfortable maybe doing them. So I'm going to stop doing them. Then I'm going to try doing this way. And just keep trying and seeing until you fit. Yeah, see where you um, feel comfortable. And I feel like I've only just found that and I've been doing it five months now. So I'd say the past month, I've only just found what I'm comfortable um, in creating content wise now. So it's okay. took me a long time. Say more about that. What were you doing before? Give us some, you mentioned side hustle video, stuff like that. And now take us into the present day. How did you come to that conclusion and what is your comfort zone now T say more about that for us so i was just uh, yeah looking at the popular videos at the start and just finding my own way to create them and most of them were like the side hustle videos because they do do so well they do really well and they work amazing for um, people so i started off with that but i never felt quite comfortable doing that um and then yeah, I've just pivoted towards more, um, I don't, just teaching really, maybe teaching people, um, rather than the side hustles. Yeah. I've, I've, but I've only just found that now and that's been after five months of doing it. So it's took me a long while. It took me a while. And it's taken you a while really to find your own voice, right? Com yeah, definitely. Definitely. What advice would you have for somebody who is having a, a hard time finding their own voice and really thinking that they have value to deliver? I think that one of the reasons why we sort of just copy other people and, and kind of do what other people are doing is because we don't think that we we don't realize that we know as much as we do. I mean, if you've gone through any of our training here, for example, you know about marketing. If you've worked in the pet niche and you've trained even a couple of dogs, you know a lot about training dogs. If you have, you know, if you've worked in the 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 shade and blind and curtain business and you've sewed for a few months, you know a lot more than the average person about sewing. So how did you begin to realize, wow, I really do have value? Was it that you you took a risk and put out a video, got some positive response back? Take us back and help us to understand try to remember what it was like when you first really realized hold on a second i know more than i think i do i have more value than i thought i have uh, just believing in yourself really um and then you only need to know like a little bit more than someone else to be able to teach something so someone yeah <laughs> that's it <laughs> so that's it and then just believing in yourself to actually do that so yeah <laughs> Wow, that's such a great, true, and powerful statement that you only need to know a little bit more than the next person to show them. You know, as I've come up in recovery rooms, and many of you know that I got clean, I got clean 15 years ago from opiates, and I had a real struggle with that for many years. Opiates meaning, you know, ultimately it led to heroin at the end. I was 24 years old, and... Um, you know, as I got clean, I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I could stay clean. And as I was staying clean or getting clean, I didn't think I could then stay clean. And somebody told me, well, the secret to staying clean is helping somebody else. And I was like, wow, wait, really? Help? What do you mean? I'm, I'm the one who needs the help, right? I thought. And they said, no, I mean, you can't keep what you have unless you give it away. And so I, I said, well, I don't have anything to give away. I don't have anything to share. I don't have anything to teach. What, what do you mean? And I learned that principle that you just said at that time. Somebody said something similar to me, said, 
if you're one step ahead of somebody else, then you can help them. You know, if you're, if you have, you know, two days clean and they have zero days clean, you can help that person get one day clean because you, you did, you know, you've done it. And so I think so many of us think that we have to be experts, gurus, have so many years of experience, but it seems that you're finding out differently. And now that you've got some momentum going, how are you capitalizing on that, Lucy? How has your confidence built over the last month? Yeah, it's the confidence now. The confidence where I know where I'm going with it. Um, so my advice would be just to give yourself time to learn the skills and to get that confidence up. And I'll go back to when I first learned how to sew and make curtains. I didn't learn that in a day. I didn't learn it in a week. I, I, even 20 years on, I was still learning new techniques. So I think just continue to learn, then you'll continue to grow, your confidence builds, and then that's when the momentum comes, I think, through yeah. that, through doing them things. So yeah, give yourself time and just continue to learn. Lucy, how have you learned and what have you learned about Lucy through this process? How have you been sort of reintroduced to yourself and realize, what have you realized about yourself that you may have forgotten or didn't know? I think you can just do anything that you put your mind to. If you, uh, yeah, if you want to do something, put your mind to it and just do it and pushing yourself like through them uncomfortable moments um because that's when you grow when you push yourself through like i'm very uncomfortable at the minute but i'm doing it i'm doing it because this is part of it it's part of my journey so yeah it's just it's just um yeah keep pushing yourself i think really mm. you're you're uncomfortable right here right now you've said that right uh, yeah <laughs> i've said it about three times now i'm not <laughs> No, I yeah, love sure. that. I love that you're sharing that. I mean, I love this is what this show is all about is, you know, taking people and you and I have never talked. I mean, I was even a minute or two late because I was coming from the decade and a day training and I, I didn't have a chance to really um, I didn't have a chance to, you know, really hop on early and even say hi. And mo most most days I don't with guests. But it's, it's a beautiful thing for us to realize that, you know, everything is figure outable and the best place for us to learn how to do it is actually by, it's actually by doing, right? Yes, it is. That's when you learn the most, definitely. And now yes. as we're 20 minutes into this show, you're starting to smile, laugh more, realize that you're not going to die. Your heart yes. maybe has slowed down <laughs> five <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you. But but a lot of times we spend so much time in our head getting ready to get ready, thinking about it, fretting about it, fearing about it, that we 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 never take action, and then we talk ourselves out of it. So have you become through this process more of an action taker rather than a over analyzer? Hundred percent. I have learned that you learn so much doing it. You have to do it. You can think about it all day long, but once you start doing it. Yeah, that's when you actually learn. Yeah, so yeah, I have. What other what other strategies or secrets have you discovered in your journey that's helped you to convert more of your traffic into leads and then those leads into sales? So posting, uh, the amount of times you posted. So I used to post three times a day at the start. Um, that was bringing me in quite a few subscribers. And then when we went on holiday to Lanzarote, I thought oh, I'm just gonna take it down to posting once a day. So I used to post once a day um, and I could see a drop in the subscribers then. So I've just upped it again to two times a day. So I do like 10 a.m., 7, um, 7 p.m. Um, when my target audience are gonna be mostly online. Um, and that's working again all right for me now. So, And that's manageable for me twice a day. But yeah, I did notice a drop in my subscribers once I started posting just once a day. Mm. There's really something to that. Um, so, uh, and, and everybody talks about consistency on the show. Everybody talks about that in our community. And if you look at the most successful marketers in our community, and it doesn't matter what niche you're in, um, you know, being consistent and posting at least twice a day minimum is an absolute why because other people out there your competition people who are also talking about similar things are posting that many times a day 
right? The real, look at, look at this show. I do a, a, an hour, you know, half hour to hour long show five days a week. There's nobody else. There's no other CEO of a large information education company who's doing this, right? So they would have to, they would have to really step their game up to catch us, right? And I've done almost 800 episodes at this point, right? Most people are not willing to do that kind of work consistently. And it may sound like work, but do I really look like I'm working here, folks? Do I really? I mean, I'm just getting on here and talk crap every day for about an hour, right? And, you know, because I know what I'm talking about, because I've done it for so long, it's like second nature. It's fun. It's fun to talk about things that you know about. It's fun to see people's expressions and have them say, wow, that really helped me or have them say, wow, that changed my life. You know, it's not an ego boost. It's just a confidence builder. How have you, how have you thought and felt and what are some of the things that have surprised you about the reactions and the enthusiasm that you have began to get from your followers? Are you surprised by sort of the micro fame in the way that people are looking up to you almost so, you know, so quickly you really only started to pick up momentum a month ago? Yeah, that, that does shock you. Um, I had one of my videos go viral and that was a shock. It literally happened overnight and I couldn't sleep that night. Mm. And then with a video going viral, you get all the trolls coming out as well. It just all happened at once. So you're just sort of like, ah! Um, but yeah, that was an ex that was definitely an experience. Um, but also another lesson. Another lesson to, yeah, to block out all the haters. And yeah. Um, but again, it builds your confidence. Mm. And then I had a lot of people subscribe through that as well. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's wild to go from like not, you know, like just being a regular person, which are pretty much what we all are and I am too. But then as you start to deliver value and create content online, you, you kind of create this like micro celebrity effect where people, you know, start to like appreciate what you're doing and they look up to you and they, I mean, just like you were talking about with M. Walcott and this happens in any niche with any person who's creating value in creating content that's both educational and entertaining. You, you begin to kind of look up to that person. You begin to kind of uh, admire that person. You appreciate that person. You start to respect that person. And that leads to trust and, and, and knowing, liking, and trusting that person. And then guess what? When you present something for them to do, something for them to buy, a recommendation, they're a lot more likely to take that. And that's how you turn those clicks and that admiration into cash in commissions. And so, um, you know, talk to us a little bit about uh, how you're managing your day. And you mentioned creating two videos per day. Like, what does a day in the life of Lucy look like now? How do you manage your time? How do you spend your time? And, and what additional things besides marketing and running your business are you, are you now able to do since you, you're not working your full-time job anymore? So this is um, over in the UK. We have a thing called the six weeks holidays where the, the children break up for six weeks. So this is the first holidays that I've not had to put Maggie, my daughter, into like summer club. Um, oh. or, and I've took my son out of nursery because he starts school in September. So we've just, we're just having a summer of fun. And then oh, I'll fit yeah. in my post in with them. So um, 10, in the, 10 o'clock in the morning, they know that mummy's on her phone just doing her content. And then seven o'clock, Tommy's usually in bed anyway. Maggie's nine now, but she knows that mummy's on her phone and she's posting her content. So I just fit it around their schedule, which is amazing. That is, that's the whole part of this. This is why I wanted to do it because um, that's what you can do. It's just super flexible. So yeah, I've been, that's how I've been managing it through this six weeks holiday. I love that, Lucy. I love that you're, you know, this is that within just a couple of months or a few months or whatever of you getting started and, and then really finding your voice only just a month ago, you, you know, you're, you're already enjoying these 
unbelievable life-changing moments and experiences where the whole your whole life is different. I mean, you, the fact that you're able to spend this time with your children and not be forced to put them in the summer camps and and have them be out of the house. You're, and also that you're able to use the time on your phone productively. And I think there's a lot of shame for parents when we you know, are on our phone when our when our when we're with our kids and we know that we're just wasting time and we know that we're just checking out, right? And there's nothing wrong with being on your phone. I'm not shaming anybody for doing that. And I do it as well. Nobody's, you know, it is what it is. But I think that if if we do it a lot and that's all we're doing when that's all we're using our phone for is just to like check out and just kind of scroll and just not have to be present with our kids or whoever else is around. I think there comes a certain amount of shame with that. And for you to mention that, you know, mommy's on her phone during this time and she's working and for your children to know that and to be able to see that, Hey, you know, when mom's on her phone, she's building her business this. And you know what? Our children are also going to be using these devices. They may even be smaller by the time they get to be adults. They are also going to be using these devices. And so what, what, what lessons and, and what do you think, how do you think this is going to impact your children in terms of encouraging them or inspiring them or teaching them how to step out of their comfort zone? And also you know, begin to be introduced to some of these skills like being on video that we know that our children are going to have to have to be successful five years from now, 10 years from now. Come on, we're not going to go backwards. So how, how, how are you feeling about that in beginning to, you know, have your children see you step outside of your comfort zone and sort of step into this kind of, you know, online technical world and do these kind of different, you know, progressive things that, you know, not that what you were doing before wasn't amazing and wasn't a very admirable thing to be doing, but it's almost like you've stepped into the future here. And how do you feel about how that's going to impact your children and what that's going to teach them? I just want to be an inspiration to him that mummy's got this goal and this dream and she's gone after it and she's made it successful with it and you can do the same and that's what I want to say like with all their goals and dreams just to go after them so just to inspire them that way um yeah yeah I love I love that I love that and so um going back to Tom shout out to Tom Okay. Uh, I love Tom. Uh, I don't even know him, but I love him from what you tell me about him. Um, how, how is your family, you know, Tom, especially, uh, you know, wh how are, what energy are you feeling from them? How, what's, how are you, you know, what sort of, how has this evolved in, into, you know, how is this, this business and what you're doing, um, created some new energy within your household or your relationship and, you know, to give us, take us into the present day. You know, obviously we heard about when he wanted you to take some time off and encouraged you to do so because you were so stressed. And then when you started this and he was kind of like a little bit like, whoa, surprised. Now take us into the present day and what's the vibe? What's the energy like? How, how are you looked at within your relationship? What does Tom think about it? And, and, you know, give us an update on that. He's just really, really proud, really proud. Mm. Um, and the fact that I want to do this to take the financial strain off him as well. Um, yeah, just, yeah, he's just really proud of me. And before I come on here, he's texted like, good luck, my baby, you're going to do amazing. Like, yeah, he's just, yeah, really proud. Yeah. <laughs> What a what an awesome what an awesome story and I know exactly where Tom's at you know on a on a on a you know a site somewhere getting ready probably mixing up some plaster getting ready to you know getting ready to do some texture on some walls or maybe he's going to do a smooth finish today and um, for him to be thinking about you and have watched your whole journey this whole time and now be so proud of you you're of course proud of yourself too, right? And, and you are feeling a new excitement about your future? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I'm really proud of myself. Um, just because it's something completely different to what I was doing before. And 
in our future i've got massive dreams and goals and i'd like to go traveling with tom and the two kids and do like a little gap year and so pursuing this dream hopefully that's going to happen in the future because we can still earn while we're traveling so i've got a bigger picture in mind for it so our whole family is going to benefit from it mm. so that's what i'm just aiming towards so yeah i'm really proud of myself as well you should be you really should be and are you able to now are you able to remember how when you first got started everything was blurry and unclear about how you were going to make this work and are you able to now connect that to the present day and and are you able to now visualize yourself traveling and still building your business and what does that tell you about sticking to something and how things can change and how the fog can clear up as you stick to it, right? Help us, help the people who are just getting started, who are listening to the show right now, that they're not able to really see or visualize how they're gonna make this happen and how they would, for example, travel while doing this. Are you able to see yourself and do you remember when you couldn't see that and everything wasn't clear when you first got started? I was so confused when I first got started, but I just started. I, I think, yeah, you are. You don't know what you, you – I didn't know what I was doing when I first started. Um, but you do find your way. You, you have got to just show up every single day. And like you said, it's consistency because with that, the path does become clearer. And all of a sudden, it just goes, ah! <laughs> and it might take you three months. You might learn straight away. I'm, I'm quite a slow learner. So it took me five months. But you will get there if you just continue on that path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. I love I love when you tell us about how you were confused and how it was so unclear because that I think when we're going through this when we first get started, we really think that everybody else gets it, understands it and that we're dumb or that we're somehow not getting it or whatever. And it's just being new at something again. And so after you had 20 years experience in, in uh, sewing and in, in the curtain business. And you probably were an expert at that. And people probably came to you and wanted your advice and looked at you like the best and said, oh, I love your work and all this. How, how did you find the humility to be new at something again? I mean, how have, right? I mean, because we all sucked at first. So how would you describe it's been like for you to be new and I want to help the new people to have a little empathy for themselves and to not feel so alone like they're the only ones. It, yeah, it felt really uncomfortable, really uncomfortable, especially at my age as well because I'm turning 40 next uh, month. So starting something brand new at this age as well, it's really scary. It is really scary. Um, but you can do it you can do it and it does yeah as the more the longer you do it it just starts clicking so yeah you'll get i think everyone feels uncomfortable when they first start something new yeah. i think that's a natural feeling yeah yeah and and we forget about all the things that we're now good at and how new and confused and lost we were when we first got started i mean many of us have you know, older children now. I mean, I have a two, seven, and I have a 22 year old. Okay. Uh, I, I, as well, he's actually on the show and works here at legendary and man, I mean, being a, an early parent who wasn't lost, you don't know what the hell you're doing. You're just trying not to kill the damn things. You know what I mean? You're just trying to keep them alive for God's sakes. And, and now being a parent is like second nature, you know, and it gets a little easier every kid that you have, right? You get a little bit more relaxed. Um, but same thing with your, any other job or career that you may have had, you, 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 you were new, you sucked at it. You, you, you faked your way through, you acted as if, right. You did whatever you had to do at the beginning to not get fired. Uh, somehow you, you made it through, right. And, and, and now you're an expert, 20 years experience and, you know, we tend to forget what that first six to 12 months was like when we had to be new at something and we didn't know anything about what we were doing. And we also forget that every single person within our community started at zero, right? You didn't get, uh, we didn't give you an account with a thousand followers, did we? 
nope <laughs> nope <laughs> zero so there there is that that journey of being new and um what would you say that the number one thing for somebody to kind of when they start marketing and they're starting with zero followers what what you know if you had to do that all over again what would you do what, what how would you get those first thousand followers on instagram and TikTok? what would you talk about having no experience or success and of course I want everybody to, to think about this in terms of any industry, in any niche. Of course, you look seem to be working in the make money online niche, in the online business niche. What, what, what would you, how would you do that all over again in order to get a little bit more momentum fast and not and get over your own imposter syndrome? If I was to do it all over again, I would do a journey of me learning because that way you can sort of talk everyone through what you're doing day by day, week by week. I think, yeah, I would do a journey of it, my journey of my learning and stuff. Yeah, because then you'd have stuff to talk about. And that's you're, what I'd do differently. Yeah. And you'd be a little bit more able and comfortable to embrace your failures and challenges and not feel like you needed to present as this big expert who is giving all this big advice and had to know everything and, and have all the answers, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 really a, a, a great piece of advice. Um, I want to I want to now I want to now kind of as we bring this in for a landing, I want to um, I want to ask you, you know, what 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 advice if you were to go back at the very beginning of your journey? even getting started and you know as you were kind of procrastinating and maybe doubting yourself and and stuff like that what what advice what did you need to hear that you now know and have the ability to say but but you you really needed to hear it back then what would you have told yourself um, just start it is just starting and believing in yourself and knowing that you can do this and you can learn something completely new um, so get rid of all the doubt. That's what I said. Get rid of all the doubt and just um, show up every single day consistently and you will definitely get there. And yeah, just, yeah, don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. You never really fail until you stop, right? Never really fail until you stop. Lucy, this has been an honor. It's been a privilege. I know you were nervous. You told us that. You may still be nervous, but I want to tell you that you absolutely rocked this. You, you've done – this has been wonderful, inspirational, and for, for, for people who are feeling like – they're the only ones with anxiety and they're the only ones who are feeling, who feel really nervous when that camera turns on or whatever you being courageous enough to be able to share your honest feelings and emotions and tell us that you're nervous and show up anyways. Um, and, and just, just, it's just made this such a wonderful experience for me. And I know it's made such a wonderful experience for everybody who's watching. May says, we love you, Lucy. Vicky says, well done. Jason says, this Wake Up Legendary has been amazing, great information. I'm very grateful to you, Lucy. Um, you know, uh, thank you, thank you. You know, I love these calls. Um, thank you, Lucy. Very inspirational. I just want you to take that in. I want you to, as we wrap up, I want you to take that in. And I want you to really realize that just as May says, you got this. This is a This looks great on you. S happiness and entrepreneurship and freedom. And, um, and the fact that you took, you, you know, you took, even though Tom was cool with you being at home and taking a break the fact that you were like, Hey, look, I want to get back out there. I want to do something for my family. You know, I want to contribute more. I want to help us to go on vacations and I'm, I'm willing to work when we go on vacations. I just need to figure out a different way to do it, a way that I can do it while I'm hanging out with my family. And you, you found that and you're doing that. And I just want to tell you that it's, it's a beautiful thing keep going, come back on the show and keep us posted on your journey and stay legendary, my dear friend. Okay. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. <laughs>
You're so welcome. You have a blessed day and tell Tom I said hello, okay? <laughs> we will do. Okay. Thank See you. you. All right, bye. bye. All right, my friends, you can go and you can find and follow Lucy over at path dot two dot passive over on TikTok and Instagram. Again, that's at path dot two dot passive. And that's her account on both TikTok and Instagram. My friend, man, I'm I'm fired up. I you know I, it's 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 uh it's medicine, baby. It's medicine. You know, it's inspirational injections here that I get every morning. I hope you do too. But I mean, at the end of the day, I can't, I can't control how you, you know, interpret these and, and, and how these land for you, but how they land for me is just freaking motivational, man. I mean, just inspirational, just takes me back, keeps me connected to the ground level, what it's like to be new, what it's like to start something and have no experience, what it's like to, you know, push through the tough parts, what it's like to be nervous and do it anyways, you know, what it's like to have fear, anxiety, self-doubt, and do it anyways, and then also what it's like to begin to be reintroduced to myself and be like, hey, hold on a second, hold on a second, I'm freaking more courageous than I thought I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm braver than I thought I was. I'm more badass than I thought I was. Damn it, I am a legend, not just in my own mind, but I'm actually doing I'm actually impacting people. And then we start to get that positive validation, maybe not from friends and family and those oftentimes are the last people that we get validation from, but for God's sakes, it starts coming from strangers out there. They're like, oh, sheesh, that was valuable. Thank you so much. They start sending DMs, and then people opt into our list. That's even more validation. Then they start buying things through our links and taking our recommendations or even buying our courses if we created one. And it's like, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. All those years, I doubted myself. All those years, I sat on the sidelines because I didn't think that I was good enough to play on the field and you get reintroduced to yourself and learn things about yourself that you that, 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 that you may have forgot. You also get reintroduced to being creative and being imagine imagination. Your imagination runs wild. You start to get playful again. You start to take yourself less seriously because the career, professional, corporate world and society, you know, it wants us to be professional and, you know, kind of like kind of be robots. And we start to shit, get a little bit more comfortable in our skin. Take us back to our childhood when we just run around barefoot and didn't care so much what everybody thought. That's where we all deserve to be. And this is a pathway to that. Thankfully, these skills that we teach are also transferable into other products and other niches. We just give you the formulas, the, the core four business models and the frameworks to build your business plans and set up your marketing systems and then go out there and show you through our training and through our guests and through our coaching calls, you know, how to find your voice. It's not a copy and paste thing. This is not a business in a box. That thing doesn't exist. If you want a business in a box, the closest thing is to save up your money and get a McDonald's franchise. But this is about building a personal brand. It's about building something that, you know, fits, your work fits into your life instead of your life having to fit into your work and you schedule everything around your work schedule. You heard Lucy talking about this morning about how to be able to now see herself traveling and working while she's traveling, filming videos and posting while she's traveling. And as a matter of fact, she said that this was the very first summer that she's had her kids not in summer camp. What a blessing. What a freaking blessing, man. That's why I show up and do this every day. Stay legendary, my friends. And if you want to make sure that you get a text every single morning, whenever we go live, text WUL to 813-296-8553. Get out of here, baby. Have a fantastic Friday. And we'll see you back here on Monday for another episode. Get out of here. Peace.